Okay, let's talk about floating point numbers. So in the thumbnail, you saw something interesting. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 equals not 0 0.3, but 0 0.3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 12 more times, and then a 4. So a lot of people watching this video probably already know the reference from the thumbnail, but for those of you who don't, in computing and programming, when you are dealing with floating point numbers and you do operations on them, some weird things can occur sometimes. So just to demonstrate it, I'm going to open up a Node.js interpreter. I'm going to do 0.1 plus 0.2, and I'm going to get 0 0.30000, and so on, up to 4. Now I know what some of you are thinking, Engineer Man, stop using that garbage JavaScript. It's just a JavaScript quirk as to why this is happening, but it's not. So let's open up Python 3, 0.1 plus 0.2, and you'll see you get the same value. And this is true of virtually every language. Any language that you try this calculation with, you're going to get the same result. There are a couple of exceptions, but those are going to be the languages that are changing the value after the fact, and it's not giving you the true representation. The simplest explanation as to why this occurs is floating point numbers do not map onto memory in a computer that nicely. And so when it does get mapped into memory, it is an approximation of the value and not the exact value. We're going to look more at this later, but this is the container that a double precision number sits in. It's 1 bit for the sign, 11 bits for the exponent, and then 52 bits for the fraction, also known as the mantissa. And then for the 32-bit variant, it's basically the same with just a smaller exponent and a smaller mantissa. So going back to what I said earlier, where floating point numbers have a hard time mapping into memory, to better understand why they have a hard time, we need to look at converting integers to binary and then look at converting decimals to binary. I have an entire video on integers to binary. I'll link that in the description, but just as a summary, in binary, each position can have a value of either 0 or 1, which means it's base 2. And so the first one here can hold 2 to the 0, the second is 2 to the 1, 2 to the 3, I'm sorry, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 6, and 2 to the 7. Now converting from integer to binary is pretty straightforward. So say I want to convert 12 to binary. All I have to do is just divide it in a half, and if there's a 0.5, then I increment the bit. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. There's no, no remainder, so this is a 0. 6 divided by 2 is 3. There's no remainder, so this is 0. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. There is a remainder, so I flip this bit, and then I drop the remainder off. 2 divided by 1 is 0.5. So I flip this bit, drop the remainder off, and I'm left with nothing. And then the resulting 8-bit representation for the number 12 would be 00001100. Now this works really well for integers because the bigger the number gets, just the bigger container you need. Storing integers in memory always stores the exact number and never an approximation up to the limit of the container. Now let's move on to decimals, and here's what gets a little hairy. So earlier I said the first bit here stores 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, and so on. So when you're doing fractions, it is 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 3, and so on. So 2 to the negative 1 could store 0.5, 2 to the negative 2 could store 0.25, 2 to the negative 3 could store 0.125, and so on. And then I'll just show the rest of the numbers using an actual calculator. So 2 to the negative 1, 0.5, 1, 2 divided by 2, 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. So you can see that it can get away from you pretty quick. So say I wanted to convert the decimal 0.624 into binary. The problem is 0.624 is never going to fit evenly into memory. And I made a little visualizer here, 0.624, to actually see what it would look like. So this is the fraction portion of 0.624. And then we can confirm this in the container that we looked at earlier, which also has 0.624 put in it. Every one of these blocks is the same as what's up here. So now let's do the same thing and look at the actual culprits from the numbers we're using, 0.1 and 0.2. So there should be two things that you notice right away. The first is that they are the exact same fraction, just with a different exponent. And the second thing is that there's a repeating pattern here of 00110011 and so on. And this repeating pattern is very important because this is the mathematical equivalent of if I were to ask you how do you write one-third the fraction as a decimal, you would tell me 0.333 with a line above it repeating. And the problem with repeating those threes forever is that it's repeating infinitely. It is an infinitely precise number. And the problem is in 
memory on a computer, you have a finite amount of space. You cannot store infinite precision. So finally, and I know it's not obvious from this, but 0.1 is going to be slightly less than 0.1 in memory, and 0.2 is going to be slightly more than 0.2 in memory. And then when you add them together, you get a result that is slightly more than 0.3. And thus, we end up with the following. The last thing I want to talk about is, does this matter? So back to our original example of 0.2 plus 0.1. Now, 0 0.000004 is a very, very small number, but it will eventually add up. You know, if you were to multiply this infinitely, you're eventually going to get to a point where the error is actually realized in the number. So depending on your application, this, this may matter or this may not. Now, 0.1 and 0.2 are not the only ones that you can sum together to get precision issues. So say you're working with prices, and the first price can be 12.31. Uh, second price can be 8.20. You sum them together, and you get 20.50999998. Now, the thing about working with prices is you're never going to show someone a floating point number in full. You're going to show it with two digits at the end to show the actual price. So if you were to do like sum dot two fixed and supply it to, you're gonna get the proper value. Most languages have an equivalent to two fixed. This is just showing you in JavaScript, but most languages can do this same thing. Now, obviously this is a string. If you really, really, really need it back as an actual float, parse the float, sum dot two fixed two, and you get 20.51 as an actual number again. In summary, the slight rounding error is probably not going to cause that much of an issue in most applications, but there is definitely cases where it will matter. Anyway, that's it for the video. Hopefully you found this helpful and hopefully you understand why 0.1 plus 0.2 does not equal exactly 0.3. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in the video, please leave them below in the comments. And as always, thanks all for watching. I really appreciate it and take care.